All right. So thank you so much. Uh, very, very good evening, everyone, uh, for joining in. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to have with us Dr. Paramesh today. He is founder of uh, Bangalore Diabetes Center and a diabetologist practicing over 30 years now. He has helped many, many patients. Uh, he has helped many, many patients, you know, reverse their diabetes. And uh, the best part about him is that he firmly believes uh, that education and right knowledge is very, very important. And it acts as a very important step if you want to reverse your diabetes. Now, thank you so much, doctor, for joining in today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to join you, Karan, always. And you started a mission uh, to reverse chronic uh, conditions. And uh, I'm always uh, happy to join you on this kind of programs. I have personally learned a lot from you in the initial days from in Bangalore. And you've always been an inspiration for many, many of us who are doing great work in this industry. So thank you so much for that, Doctor. Now, <clears throat> Doctor, let's start uh, with the fact that type 2 diabetes, uh, as we know, is now an epidemic or lifestyle disease. Every, every other house has someone suffering with either diabetes or pre-diabetes. And it is a silent killer because... Uh, you know, people with living with diabetes get complications with, with respect to kidney issues. They are high risk of heart disease, you know, diabetic neuropathy, you know, their retinopathy and the blood circulation. In fact, there were studies which shows that people who have diabetes, they age one third faster compared to others. But, but at the same time, we also know that diabetes is not a lifelong disease, but it's a lifestyle disease. So, so what are your thoughts on uh, that with respect to type 2 diabetes being a lifestyle disease and why do you feel it has become an epidemic what it is today? Yeah, I think that's a very important question that you've asked. Why is it we are seeing it in such an epidemic proportions in the last few decades, uh, I would say, and uh, why was it not there, say, 50 years back or 100 years back? And it's very obvious we could not have had any genetic change in this short span of time. So obviously it's lifestyle which has changed. Uh, it all started with the agricultural revolution where we started producing breeds for their greater productivity. And we lost the natural variety of uh, the uh, plants that we used to grow and focusing only on the yield. And uh, again, the methods of uh, farming changed with a lot of insecticides, pesticides, and herbicides, all that us usage uh, gave us no doubt good food to eat, but then uh, uh, good quantity, but uh, they are not the right quality of food. And worse than what happened with the agricultural revolution, it is the industrial revolution which caused a bigger problem where processing of food and storage of food with uh, different chemicals added uh, to food to store it, make it uh, uh, tastier and all of that came in. And that's where the uh, diabetes got blown up out of proportion. So if you look at uh, a few generations back, maybe we expect, uh, go back to our great grandfathers and all of them. The food that we ate uh, in those generation and today's generation looks very similar or from the outside. But if you look at, I'll take an example of simple wheat. The wheat variety that we grew uh, earlier was the kapli wheat, which was grown naturally in our soil. And today we have the imported genetically modified uh, the uh, wheat, which is high yield, but definitely not the right uh, content of gluten in it so much of uh, leaky guts coming out because of the wrong variety of wheat. So what I would like to stress upon is that it is not directly the rice or wheat which is responsible. It is the kind of rice and wheat, the way we process it today and the way we eat it today. So I think that's where uh, we are uh, seeing that enormous uh, proportion of uh, diabetes which is spreading like a, a pandemic like you rightly said. And added to that is the lifestyle factors. Uh, so one simple thing I would like to say is, of course, all of us know about the lack of exercise that we uh, are having in the current generation. 
but the sitting itself the amount of hours we sit especially with the corona pandemic <laughs> all indoors again not exposed to sunlight that itself is a big risk factor for developing various chronic metabolic conditions so i think this combination of nutritional and uh, behavioral and lifestyle factors is the one which has really given us this pandemic and it is not hereditary as we many often believe type 2 diabetes is hereditary but i think it's just the gun but we are pulling the trigger absolutely absolutely that's very well said and that's the another question which you really triggered me to ask majority people think that it's in the family it's in it's hereditary but as you rightly say that if it's in your family then it's like you have a loaded gun but the trigger is your lifestyle right so so now what are the simple five uh, things that you would advise when it comes to lifestyle so one you mentioned was you should not be sitting for a long period of time you know another one that you always recommend is intermittent fasting so what are what are those simple five things that you would want to advise to people that can help uh, that can help them reverse their type 2 diabetes since you started with exercise to begin with let me start with uh, talking about exercise mm -hmm. uh, many diabetic patients lose muscle mass as we age uh, every decade we are losing a lot of muscle mass and muscle is not just for the show of it it is the one which is burning our glucose storing our glucose keeping the blood sugars normal so it's not sufficient for us just to do the walk we need to do some kind of resistance exercise and uh, the important thing is resistance exercise need not be done in the gym with a lot of number of hours in fact if you find the right kind of exercise you can do it at home with just your body weight spending right. hardly about 15 minutes three times in a week you can develop good muscle mass so i think that is the first part i would like to focus on because not many of us focus on building our muscle mass which is very crucial for uh, preventing diabetes the second thing like you rightly said the sedentary time we call it as sitting disease one hour of sitting is as bad as smoking a cigarette so imagine the hours you spend sitting i think today is uh, corona times people sit for 12 to 14 hours uh, at home and uh, sitting is just more uh, dangerous than even smoking i would say and even if the same person is to exercise one or two hours in the morning and sits for the remaining 12 hours he is not going to benefit from that exercise so you need to spread out the activity throughout the day and avoid the sitting period and uh, sleep is something that we really uh, miss out on we all know that diet is important exercise is important sleep we think we can manage uh, with uh, less number of hours there is one study which says even if you miss out on one to two hours of sleep the next day your insulin resistance is up by 50% imagine what it can do for your blood sugar if you continuously sleep late and uh, do not get enough sleep very true so i think uh, we have covered two factors exercise activity and sleep then coming to diet uh, we all know the impact of high sugar in our diet Uh, what uh, we used to do uh, when i was a kid we would get about 4 or 5 kgs of sugar for the whole family uh, in a month from the ration shop today i think uh, we need 4 or 5 kgs per person per month <laughs> we spend so much of sugar uh, on our uh, food and uh, imagine a coca cola gives you about 13 spoons of sugar in a bottle of coca cola so how many coca colas we consume in a day especially the youngsters today so sugar is something that you need to avoid does it mean we should avoid sugar altogether absolutely not tomorrow is being a yogadi festival <laughs> you definitely would love to have a sweet and that is we are not going to prevent you from doing that if you are good with that but then as long as we restrict our sweet intake into those special occasions and avoid the sugar i think that's the first foremost important thing that we can do to help our health then coming to the intake of carbohydrates in our diet uh, nobody is saying don't take carbohydrates i think we don't have to go to that extreme we can always consume good healthy carbohydrates with good amount of fiber but whenever we talk of carbohydrate people have this in mind whole grains we should understand vegetables are one of the best carbohydrates you can get 
And if you look at all the nutrient density, in fact, that's what we call the nutrient density, the amount of nutrients you get per calorie, vegetables have the best nutrient density that you can get comparing to even the whole grains. So all that we have to do in our diet is a simple increase in the quantity of vegetables and reduce the quantity of grains, even if it is whole grains. I think that's one simple thing that we can all practice in our day-to-day uh, -day life. Going on to stress, stress is again a bad thing which can uh, impact your uh, diabetes. Hmm. Lead you into diabetes, aggravate your diabetes. And I would like to mention here one uh, very uh, avid case that I remember. Uh, we had a patient who, whom we were trying to reverse uh, her diabetes. She was doing everything right. She was eating what we told her to eat. She was exercising. And then we were uh, really perplexed as to why she is not getting better. Mm -hmm. And she was a young uh, mother with a child of, uh, I think, six or eight months. Okay. And uh, she was also working from home. So she was only getting three hours of sleep. Okay. And imagine this lady, when we told her, you, you, you need to correct your sleep. In 15 days of time, her sugar disappeared once she corrected her sleep. So sleep is so important. So I think today we need to put emphasis on all the lifestyle factors, starting from stress, sleep, food, exercise, and sunlight. I think that's one thing we miss. Sunlight is something which we all think is for vitamin D. Uh, unfortunately, we all think we can pop a tablet of vitamin D and we can forego the sunlight. It's not really so because nature is so magical uh, it can uh, induce a lot of uh, all the toxins that your body makes sunlight has the impact of reducing all the oxidative stress in your body which yeah. is not through the vitamin d so vitamin d is just one of the benefits of sunlight so if you go to a village and see a person working in the farm eating uh, early and sleeping early and, and rightly you mentioned intermittent fasting so I think uh, we have this saying uh, that we need to eat less number of times. In fact, God sends us uh, to the earth with uh, not the number of days we live and the number of meals that we are going to eat. So it all depends on how soon you want to finish off the meals or you still want to live longer by eating lesser number of meals in a day. So one is reduce the frequency of eating and the number of times you eat. and. Uh, I want to mention one Dr. Sachin Panda from Orissa, who's now settled in Harvard. 30 years of his research decade, he has spent on only deciding which is the right time to eat. And he says the best time to eat is before 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we all know of a lot of our gurus, uh, Sadhguru eats at one meal a day at 4 o'clock. We have a lot of gurus who eat at one meal a day. And that's our ancient saying. Uh, one time eater is a yogi, two time eater is a bogi, and three times eating is a dogi. So uh, the number of times should be less and never eat after sunset. I think that's one important thing, message I would like to give your audience here is not to eat after sunset. I know it is difficult in today's life, but it is worth your effort if you really practice eating early in the evening, as early as you can eat, when you can come back home and eat. Uh, Please let us understand, it takes more than six hours for your stomach to empty and digest to the food that we feed. And when you are sleeping with empty stomach, that is when your body can invest in healing. So right. that healing period is what you rightly said, intermittent fasting period. And the more we give the time for our body to heal, the better it gets uh, uh, soon. So I think uh, I'll pass turn. No, no. I think I think this is this is gem of an information because you. I, I was just making notes and you have covered it so brilliantly. I will just highlight a few very important points for all the audience. So number one, uh, sleep. What he was mentioning. I mean, I mean, you know, with real life example, and there are so many studies on importance of sleep for reversing diabetes and for overall health, which is excellent. Now, uh, another very, very practical and a very simple advice, increase the intake of vegetables uh, and de decrease your intake of grains. Powerful because, you know, it is vegetables which give you a lot of nutrients, a lot of fiber, makes your body alkaline and a lot of benefits. So that's very, very practical. And again, frequency of meals, 
sleep is important stress sunlight all of that so i think you covered it very very well one word that you that you used to while in your explanation was fiber and i was just reading few articles couple of weeks back that how 95% of population today is moving towards deficiency in this very very important uh, ingredient called fiber which is which is uh, causing epidemic of chronic diseases lack of fiber and you you get fiber only in plant foods and not in packet foods and junk foods and so what what is your advice to people uh, who are regularly uh, consuming packet foods ultra processed foods which has no fiber vis-a-vis -vis they should be eating more plant foods any any advice uh, or your experience uh, that you want to share with them uh, so what i would like to point out is the recommendation is about say 30 to 35 grams of fiber intake per day but don't go by the labels that uh, food packets put on they would add certain fibers which are mostly insoluble fibers which can help only help you to ease in your motions they are not really going to impact on your health the ones which impact your health is the soluble fibers and these soluble fibers are available in plenty in the greens and the vegetables and the fruits so when you eat every fruit and every vegetable you get a different kind of fiber and these fibers are those carbohydrates which cannot be digested by the human enzymes and they are digested by the bacterial enzymes which are present in your large intestine the colon and this is where uh, we see the benefit that each kind of fiber is helpful in improving a particular kind of bacteria which is good for you so the more different kind of vegetables that you eat, in fact, the recommendation is to have at least 20 to 25 vegetables in a week. Wow. So you're getting different kinds of vegetables also is important. It's not enough if you eat cucumber every day. Uh, that's a habit some people have. But I don't uh, say uh, don't play cucumber, but then try and have as many vegetables as you can so that you are able to feed more kind of bacteria, the gut bacteria, I'm sure it's a big uh, news in this uh, media now. Yeah. The gut health is crucial to our whole body. And uh, the one best way to improve your gut health is including different kind of fibers in your diet. Eat more colors. Because, Eat more colors. Yeah, <laughs> more colors, more fibers, more for polyphenols and finally, one, I think one interesting point you brought out was polyphenols, uh, especially let us say the olive oil that we take has a lot of polyphenol. And the surprising thing is the polyphenol is feeding the gut bacteria and it is not going into your system. It is helping you because it is improving your gut bacteria. So uh, I think uh, fiber uh, definitely is a big uh, role to impact on your diabetes, obesity, heart health, all of this can be uh, taken care of if you have the right fiber in your diet. True. I think that's very, very well, uh, well, you know, very, very well portrayed because, you know, gut, as you rightly said, we have billions of bacteria in our gut. And now we know that the food of these gut bacteria is fiber. So every time we are eating more fiber, more colors, not only are we eating, but billions of bacteria in our gut is also getting food. And if your bacteria is eating, getting enough food, the variety and the quality, the diversity of your gut bacteria is also improving. Uh, now, now, again, hearing from Dr. Paramesh today, who has helped many, many patients uh, reverse uh, their diabetes, who is, who is founder of Bangalore Diabetes Center based in Bangalore. Now, Dr. Paramesh, uh, quick uh, three mistakes that a lot of uh, people who have diabetes, they make. So one could be they think that they should avoid fruits because fruits are sugar. So what are the common three mistakes that you have seen in your experience, which you want to, you know, uh, prepare uh, audience today to not make those mistakes in their life? So if you can just highlight those, any three mistakes that you feel, uh, you know, that, that, that people make generally if they have diabetes. Yeah, I think uh, having practiced for close to 30 years in diabetes, I've been fighting this myth that wheat and uh, ragi or millet is better than rice. In fact, many studies have shown they all are essentially carbohydrates. They can equally impact your sugars. So people think eating rotis and uh, eating ragi, they are on a diet. 
So, uh, I mean, uh, every time, in fact, a patient comes, I stress on only these two things that, in fact, it is your greens and vegetables, whatever you eat as your side dish has to become your main dish. And your main dish, which you're eating as rice and roti, has to become like your pickle or pepper. You eat, keep it at the side and eat. And I think if all our diabetic patients practice just that much, I think you can reduce the intake of medicines to 50% uh, easily. Uh, the impact is so much. Second thing is the sequence of eating uh, is very important. Unfortunately, we have the habit of eating the roti and rice and then also eating the vegetables in the side. If you just practice eating the greens and vegetables and the protein food in the beginning, and then eat the rice or roti at the end. One way, you are already your stomach is full and you will eat less of your rice and roti. Right. And more importantly, when you chew your food well, there are very good hormones which get secreted, like the GLP hormones, which also secrete your insulin and help your body prepare to control the sugars when you eat. So the, do not be in a rush to eat food. We call you, I mean, I'm sure I've seen you talking about mindful eating many times. Yes. So one of that is mindful eating and the eating in sequence, where you eat the vegetables and greens first, and then having your carbohydrate at the end, the uh, starchy foods at the end. I think these two things, if uh, our patients follow, uh, they will definitely be much better with their sugar control. Excellent. I, th I think this is very, 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 very important because, you know, in India, we have a habit of having rice roti as the main and vegetables less and salads and all of that together goes very less. So make that as a main dish and make this, that's a very, very good point. And chewing that you mentioned is very important because our digestion does not start in the stomach, it starts here. So chewing your food properly is very, very important. And sleep is another thing which I really want to touch upon, but I think you mentioned it very, very evidently from the beginning. And I, and I tell you, doctor, a lot of people, when I talk to them, they're sleeping at 1.30, they're sleeping at 2 o'clock. And I think poor sleep is also an epidemic, which is causing other diseases. And I'm sure you also must be seeing a lot of this with your patients. Right. So, so, so now just to conclude on this, uh, doctor, anyone who is hearing us today, uh, I think you have given enough of the uh, insights and enough of practical advices, which people can uh, start following uh, you right away. And, you know, I will make a summary of this and we will also share it with all the audience. But, but to just conclude, uh, doctor, from tomorrow, whoever is listening to this, who has diabetes or has anyone in their family who has diabetes, what are that three things that you want them to start doing from tomorrow? Three things. I think uh, we have said it before, but I would like to say it again. Do not believe that medicines is your final answer for diabetes. Uh, being a diabetologist myself, having prescribed uh, medicines, I still see patients coming saying, doctor, I heard you are doing well and uh, you will give me some better medicines. I, I don't have any better medicines. Uh, all of us uh, in India, we have about 12 or 13 tablets that we can give for diabetes. So it's something which is very common. But I would say if you put it in a percentage, your medicine would work about 20%, your exercise another 20%, your sugar uh, intake in the form of food is 60%. So if you manage the source of sugar in the diet, you are able to control it to the tune of 60%. So just change this attitude that it is not going to be medicine. It is diet first, exercise second, and medicine should be the last option you should look at. I think this, if you get in, then you start searching what is the right diet, what is the right uh, exercise that I should do. And um, the second thing that I would like to do, uh, ask my patients to do is, they have this myth that I should start something in the morning before I go out for a walk. I eat some coffee with two Mari biscuits, which is the worst biscuit that you can eat. <laughs> the, it has maida, it has sugar, it has everything that you really don't want to eat uh, in the diabetic patient, but still people think that's the best uh, biscuit. And then they go and come back and have a breakfast, not because they are hungry, because the wife has already prepared the breakfast, it's going to get cold and they eat the breakfast because it's already breakfast time. Then uh, some snack which comes in the afternoon uh, by 11 or 12 and then again another meal uh, by 1 or 2. 
evening snack with uh, coffee or tea and then dinner and then post dinner fruit or milk <laughs> so you are actually loading your body with unnecessary number of times of food and the quantity of food so if you start practicing eating lesser number of times uh, with healthy and nutritious food you will not feel hungry again if you eat the right quantity of greens vegetables and protein in any meal you will you can be hunger free for the next 6 hours or 8 hours so you don't really need to eat more so two things uh, so one don't depend on medicines two is eat eat right eat right and i am so glad and so i feel grateful you know because uh, majority people suffering with diabetes have this mindset that once you are a diabetic or once you have started your medicines for diabetes you are supposed to take it for life long and today we have someone who is a very very senior diabetologist of the country telling us in this forum that diabetes is not a lifelong disease you change your lifestyle you change your food habits your sleep your stress you know all of that and you can completely reverse this so thank you so much doctor it is indeed a pleasure to have you with us to help us spread right knowledge and right awareness thank you so much once again uh, for your time great pleasure karan thanks for inviting me take care thank you so much everyone for signing in take care